We thank the Lord for life spared for this another broadcast time. You're listening to the Way of Truth, coming from the radio studios of the Church of God in Hagerstown, Maryland, United States of America. This is Alvin A. Craig speaking. We're thankful that you're tuned our way, and we invite you to stay with us. Heavenly Father, we are truly thankful for the privilege we have of presenting this gospel broadcast today, and we are truly thankful for the love of God that brought Jesus into this sin-cursed, sin-sick, sin-benighted world to make it possible for us to be delivered from sin and to be children of God. We're praying that as this broadcast service goes forth, the Holy Spirit will accompany it and will make it a blessing to each one in our congregation. If there are those listening who do not know Thee as Lord and Savior, we pray that the Holy Spirit will be able to deal with them. Those that may be discouraged, may the Holy Spirit lift them up and encourage them. And those that may be sick and suffering, may your heart be touched, and may you be pleased to minister to their needs. 
This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our subject for today's broadcast, Biblical Love, and our text of Scripture is found in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. The Apostle John is known as the Apostle of Love, but as you read his epistles, you'll find some very straightforward statements. I suppose some would be offensive to some people. Nevertheless, I accept it as the Word of God. And I say this particular passage of Scripture, along with all others, needs to be taken seriously. First John chapter 4, verse 8, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And from Vine's expository dictionary of New Testament words, we read these following comments on agapa. That's A-G-A-P-A-O, which is the verb, and agape, which is A-G-A-P-E, the noun. Agape and agapa are used in the New Testament to describe the attitude of God toward His Son, the human race generally, and to such as believe on the Lord Jesus Christ particularly, to convey His will to His children concerning their attitude one toward another, 
and toward all men. Love can be known only from the actions it prompts. God's love is seen in the gift of His Son. But obviously, this is not the love of complacency or affection. That is, it was not drawn out by an excellency in its objects. But God commendeth His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5 and 8. In other words, God did not love us because we were so good and lovable. It was an exercise of the divine will in deliberate choice, made without assignable cause, save that which lies in the nature of God Himself. Love had its perfect expression among men in the Lord Jesus Christ. Christian love is the fruit of His Spirit in the Christians. And that's the end of the quote the excellency of biblical love, the, excellent, the excelling nature of biblical love is taught in various scriptures. Love is the first and great commandment upon which all other laws and requirements depend. You remember the lawyer came to Jesus and asked him, what is the first and great commandment? And Jesus responded, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. And the second is lacking unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So these great commandments are which are upon the laws and requirements, all laws and others depend upon. Love motivates required obedience. If a man love me, he will keep my words. John chapter 14 and verse 23. Love motivates requires obedience. Not that you are forced to, not that you are coerced to, but because of your love. Your love motivates you. It requires obedience. Now, the expression, labor of love, found in 1 Thessalonians 1 and 3, is simply labor that love produces. Yes, the labor of love that Paul speaks about is simply labor that love produces. And that's the kind of love, and that's the kind of works that pleases Almighty God. Christians are to serve one another By love, according to Paul in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13. And Paul tells us in Romans 13 and 10, Love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Paul summed up the excellency of love when he wrote thus, And above all these things put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 14. And I'm sure many in my congregation today are familiar with what we call the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. That is a beautiful chapter, and I like to read it from time to time to keep my mind refreshed as to what the Word of God says about love. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. The marvels of love, someone has said, the agape love of the New Testament is unparalleled. Man has no love on his own that even comes close to duplicating biblical love. For instance, a marvel that God loves man when man is a sinner. Again, Romans 5 and 8. One of the most moving yet profound statements in the Bible is found in John 3.16. And I suppose that is one of the most familiar and often used scriptures that you will find. But this is a very moving, it is a very profound statement. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And it go, Jesus went on to say that the Father did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. No wonder the Apostle John said in his first epistle, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. And let me repeat this, something that I have said before. We talk about what Jesus did in dying on the cross, and rightly so. We need to talk about it. We need to preach about it. We need to meditate on it. But we also need to consider what it cost Almighty God to give His only begotten Son to allow Him to be treated the way He was, to be spit upon, to be beaten, to have a portion of His his beard plucked out, to have a crown of thorns placed on His head and a reed hit him over the head, driving those thorns deeper into his brow, and then taking him to Calvary, and there crucifying him. It took love for the Father not to wipe out those people who were doing that evil deed to his Son. Yes, it took love for God to restrain himself. So I say, not only... Is it a wonderful example of love that Jesus gave himself for us, but that the Father would give him and allow him to be treated in such a way as that? It is indeed love for God. So love the world. That, that, that's the world of people. That's you and me. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Biblical love cannot love opposites. And that's another thought I'd like to emphasize. Biblical love cannot love opposites. According to Jesus, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Now, can we accept? Will we accept the words of the Lord Jesus here? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. A lot of unsaved people would say, well, I don't despise God, but look what Jesus said. They will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Matthew 6 and 24. True love is so strong, pure, and single in nature that it will not allow or admit anything opposite. So if you love God, you're not going to love the world. And if you love the world... You do not love God. And if you are sinning, you are obeying Satan and not God. You show your love to God by living in obedience to His Word. Now, love demands the truth and hates that which is false. Now, realize in the religious world, you hear a lot about love, love, love. And, of course, we should hear a lot about love. But... Well, there's another side to God. There's also the God of wrath. Yes, there is the God of wrath. Again, as I have said in previous broadcasts, what effect, what authority would God's law be if there was no penalty to it? There is a penalty connected to disobeying God. And love demands the truth and hates that which is false. The psalmist said in the 119th Psalm and the 104th verse, Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. I say the more you love God, the more you will hate evil. The more you love God, the more you will hate error. Now, I'm not talking about hating people. No, God does not teach us 
to hate anyone. But he does teach us to hate evil. We are to eschew evil. We can hate people's sinful ways while loving them. And I know some people don't want to accept that, but it is a fact nevertheless. You can love people and hate their sinful ways. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Now we are speaking at the moment of the marvels of love. And this love requires that we love our enemies. Yes, this love requires us to love our enemies. Matthew 5 and 44 instructs, this love also instructs us or causes us to love our wife. Husbands, love your wife even as Christ loved the church. Ephesians 5.25. I wonder how many husbands really do that. Oh, wife, you are blessed indeed if you have a husband who loves you as much as Christ loved the church. For Christ loved the church so much that he gave his life for it. And the Scriptures also teach, this love also teaches us, that wives are to love their husbands, and they are to love their children. According to Paul's writings to Titus in chapter 2 and verse 4, love is greatly needed in this world today. This idea that people are murdering, killing others, and they're doing it in the will of God, is so far from the Scriptures that it's hard to believe that those people are so deceived that they believe that. And if they are killed by some atheist or some infidel, they're going to go right straight to heaven. I heard of one Muslim is supposed to have said there was two ways for him to go to heaven, and one of them was to kill an American, and the other one was to be killed by an American. You pardon me, but that is certainly foreign to the teachings of the Word of God. So God has taught us to love even our very enemies, taught us to love our husbands, to love our wives, to love our children, to love everybody. Now, the presence and absence of love, let us think about that for a moment, the presence and the absence of love. On this thought, let us consider Paul's teachings regarding love in 1 Corinthians 13. And I want you to notice in this passage of Scripture, I referred to it a few moments ago, but let me read just a few verses from this chapter in 1 Corinthians 13, and notice what the Apostle Paul says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Now Paul did not say that you could have all faith and move mountains and all. He is emphasizing the importance of love and the absence of love. If I do not have love, even though I do these other things, I am nothing. I am as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. It profiteth me nothing. And so it is very important that we have the love of God. Paul ends this little chapter by saying, Now abideth faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Now, I'd like to call your attention to another passage of Scripture. This is in Second Timothy, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce-breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, 
despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Whenever people love themselves more than they love God, then these things will follow their lives. But, Paul said, they're still going to have a form of godliness even though they live that kind of a life. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, false accusers, despisers of those that are good, and still they have a form of godliness. How What an absence of true love in that heart that bears the fruit that Paul has spoken of here. In closing, I would like to again quote from Vine's Biblical Dictionary. Here is the quote, Self-will, that is, self-pleasing, is the negation of love to God. Christian love, whether exercised toward the brethren or toward men generally, is not an impulse from feelings. It does not always run with the natural inclinations, nor does it spend itself only upon those uh, for whom some affinity is discovered. Love seeks the welfare of all and works no ill to any. Love seeks opportunity to do all men, to all men, especially toward them that are of the household of faith. Heavenly Father, we are truly thankful for the privilege of sharing this and other Way of Truth broadcasts with our precious congregation today. We trust that the Holy Spirit has been able to make it a blessing to each one. Good will be accomplished. Souls will be blessed. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It is a privilege to share the Way of Truth broadcast with you from week to week. We trust that it is, a being, it is being a blessing. If so, why not take time to let us know our mailing address, the Way of Truth broadcast, Post Office Box 88, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21741, USA. Our email address, truth at fred.net, truth at fred.net. And our webpage address, www.wayoftruth.org, www.wayoftruth.org. And don't forget, if you'd like to have information on our coming Bible Land trip, write and in care of the Way of Truth, and we'll be happy to send you the information. Our mailing address again, the Way of Truth broadcast, Post Office Box 88, Hagerstown, Maryland. And now, this is Alvin A. Craig. We thank you for the privilege of sharing today's broadcast with you. We trust that it has been a blessing, and we invite you to be with us on our next broadcast. Until then, may the Lord's blessings abide.